Joining me now is longtime uh, journalist and author Edward Lucas, who is also campaigning for the Liberal Democrat Party in Wen Westminster. Hi, Ed. Hello. Look, first of all, can I just get your reaction? I mean, this, these drownings that have occurred, um, 27 people, including a pregnant woman and children uh, in the English Channel are pretty horrendous. It's horrendous and all the more horrendous because it's part of a horrendous saga. We don't know how many people have died um, from drowning in the English Channel. We do know that people have died trying to get to Britain in other ways, uh, notably with a container on the back of a truck where a lot of people suffocated to death. And what this really shows is the government's attempt to close down migration and asylum claims through deterrence simply isn't working. It just encourages people to take greater risks and gives even more profits to the people traffickers. And yet, all of the talk today from the Conservative government in Britain is to get tougher. I don't know how you could get tougher, really. You know, we are an island with a coastline. France is quite close. They can't move Britain further away. And they've tried every form of deterrence, um, compatible and even perhaps even not compatible with international law. What we really need is a safe way for people to claim asylum, which doesn't involve this kind of Hunger Games ordeal, um, which gives a big advantage to the younger and stronger and not necessarily most deserving. Um, but we've closed down every safe and legal way of applying for asylum in this country. And this is the only one left, so people are taking it. Why are they closing down every possible route to the United Kingdom when many people say that they take far less refugees in the UK than they do in other parts of Europe and that Britain has an obligation to take some of these people? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the numbers involved are tiny. Um, they're actually conspicuous now because we see them coming on these boats, whereas previously they maybe came in the back of trucks and were not so um, immediately visible. Uh, but you know, the enormous numbers of refugees are in countries like Iran from Afghanistan, Turkey, Syria. That's where the real burden of um, refugees is. And these are numbers in the thousands, perhaps the tens of thousands. And we have a responsibility in Britain to treat people fairly. Every one of these people is an individual and every one of them has the right to claim asylum. That doesn't necessarily mean they'll get asylum, although I would hope that many of them would. And uh, the paradox is, of course, that in Britain we actually have a labour shortage right now. And many of these people are super keen to work and often very highly skilled. And um, that the government is absolutely imprisoned by the kind of logical trap they've created for themselves where they say, Migration is a threat, foreigners are bad, it's about terrorism, it's undermining our system, it's undermining social cohesion. And so they go headline hunting, and the result is that people die. Priti Patel, the Home Secretary for the United Kingdom, said today that the government's not, quote, heartless. And she said that they have a humane approach to asylum seekers. What would you say? Well, if this is humane, I'd like to see what inhumane looks like. I mean, it's also worth noting there's an enormous backlog. Um, people wait for years for their claims to be processed. And the policy of a hostile environment to illegal immigrants and the idea that you can sort of deter people with the threat of destitution all helps make people miserable and doesn't mean they don't contribute to the economy and gives it perhaps some cheap headlines for the government, but it's not the way that uh, a civilized country should be going about this. And of course we have to have national borders and we, should need, we need to protect them. Um, but what we're actually doing is encouraging people to attack our borders through this kind of criminal um, industry of migration. And the only people who benefit from this are actually the people traffickers who are making huge amounts of money. And I can't see really how the government can succeed in this approach when they've basically tried everything that is legal and some things that are perhaps not legal. Edward, you were here for the Brexit campaign when Boris Johnson um, and other conservatives were, were running across the country, really uh, stirring up a, a lot of fear uh, before the vote to leave the European Union about immigration and about people you know, flooding across the, the borders. 
have they kind of created their own mousetrap here where they suddenly cannot be more humane and they can't get softer with people because they whipped up this hysteria? Well, I think that there is a genuine problem in this country about access to public services. And that's where it starts. People say, I can't get my kid into a local school. I can't get an appointment to see my GP. I can't get social housing. And that strain is the result of years and years of neglect going back not just to this government and its predecessor, but actually to Tony Blair's government, which allowed East Europeans to come from the new member states here without thinking about public service provision. And that's created a genuine sense of grievance. And I think people are right to be cross about that. The, you, know, you pay your taxes, you should have access to public services, and you worry if you think people are jumping the queue. But what has happened is that that grievance has been weaponized, has been instrumentalized as a kind of political tool by the Conservative Party, and with this kind of chest beating idea, we're defending Britain by keeping these foreigners out. And the problem with that is it's both morally questionable, but it also just doesn't work. It creates uh, the demand and the supply for a very lucrative criminal industry, which kills quite a lot of its customers um, in the most gruesome and despicable way through drowning at sea. It is gruesome. I, I would ask you just as a last question to you, what do you think would be the immediate answer rather than getting harsher uh, and pressing the French, uh, you know, in joint patrols and pretty Patel, the Home Secretary has talked about pushbacks with boats, which I think even the United Nations has called her out on. What would be a partial answer is that to allow people to come here um, in, a, in a reasonable way, a reasonable form of transportation openly, and then apply for refugee status here, rather than trying to push them back across the channel or force them into, into taking these containers and, and other horrible forms of travel where they perish. Well, I would open asylum processing centers in the countries that are most hard hit by war and climate change and so on and say, if this is where you're being persecuted, there's a place you can go to right here in Turkey, in Lebanon, in, in Iran, if we could manage it. We have a particular responsibility to Afghanistan, having made such a, a mess of our intervention there. Indeed. And that would mean that you don't start off by thinking, I've got to go a quarter of the way around the world in horrible conditions, all the way through the Balkans and across Europe in order to get to Calais, in order then to try and get across the channel. And this is this sort of Hunger Games approach where you make it into an absolute ordeal. And if you say your best chance of getting asylum and be able to get legal, and I would actually offer, also offer migration visas as well, where you could come in for five years and try and you know, get yourself established in Britain. So I wouldn't say it's only, um, only asylum seekers who should be allowed to come. But if you process those people, um, in a humane and efficient way on the spot, then you will not have these refugee camps and migration camps um, growing up on the coast of France, because what's the point? You can apply in Turkey, you can apply in Pakistan, you can apply in India, and we can do this with biometric checks and so on and make sure people are who they say they are. Now, that won't completely wipe out the criminal business of trying to get people into this country who perhaps don't have any legitimate um, asylum uh, claim and perhaps uh, you know are not the sort of migrants that any country would choose would, would, would choose to want but at least you've taken the the the, the humanitarian sting out of this and to, you know, and and, I, and there's plenty more we could do as well but I think that you, the fundamental thing you've got to be honest with the voters and admit this isn't working it's cruel and inefficient and it creates wonderful business opportunities for some of the nastiest people in the world and sets the stage for these tragic events on the English Channel. Edward Lucas, great to talk to you. It's my pleasure. Thanks.